There we go. Now a recording's in progress and we're all ready to go. And hello, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Good to talk to you. We have a whole bunch of people waiting to come on our little get together this evening, this afternoon. And so I may as well uh, just let them in. Let me make sure they're all legitimate. Okay, here we go. And uh, we're, uh, uh, I believe, all oh, recording and we're live on Facebook and we're all going and I'm confused. Ah, here they are. Here they go. There is, uh, there is, okay, first of all, we've got Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie, down in there. In hey, town. How are you doing? Pretty and, good. Yeah, and uh, the lovely and attractive Lynn LaFrisco. How are you, Lynn? I'm well, sir. Thank you. How are you? Okay, good. And, of course, we got Andrew Deutsch. How are you, Andrew? I'm good. How are you? Terrific. Mike Chisholm, all the way up there in Canada. How are you? Greetings, everybody. Happy Independence Day. The happy in uh, <laughs> this is an independent happy calendar day. <laughs> no, wait, but what do you celebrate for Independence Day up there? No, no, no. We're the first. I'm saying happy belated Independence Day to you. I should have said belated in there. That's my bad. <laughs> well, I couldn't cool. make a snarky comment. You have to say it wrong so I can snark. <laughs> oh, okay. Snarky comment day. Okay. All right. And uh, hello to uh of course. Oh, we're gonna have to let Marjorie in here. Hold on a second. Do we know her? Uh, <laughs> oh, better be careful. Not, not, not biblically. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hello, Francine. Here in New York. Also here in the New York area is Edward Berger. That's right. Wearing a WMCA good guys. Uh, is that it's, an it, it, that's an Erstat uh, good guy sort? Sure. It's not a real one. It's, well, it, it, uh, what happened was okay. The, I worked for a radio station it was called WMCA and they had these incredible, they gave away, you couldn't buy these. You had to win them. Mm. They, they gave away maybe, you know, they would go to a concert and say, if you come to the concert, everybody will get a good guy's sweatshirt. They gave away almost 3 million of those things for free. Wow. wow. Okay. Uh, and that logo became eventually became the smiley face, but this was long before the smiley face. All right, is That's that the right. is that where it came from? Like, really, I think so. Yeah, are you what? telling me? And what happened? What created the first emoji? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, anyway. But they gave away those sweatshirts, and when I was with WMCA, I was uh, uh considered what they called a good guy. That was one of the, that's what the sweatshirt says, WMCA good guys. I was the last good guy ever, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not for any reason of me doing something to make myself the last good guy. I just was the last good guy. All right. The last guy that got fired, you mean? The last, <laughs> the last guy that came to the station and was named a good guy before they went to other formats, before they went to an all talk format and so on and so forth uh, and, and abandoned the good guy moniker. And yeah. uh, so therefore I became kind of the last good guy. And I remember having to do a promo one day and they said, hi, I'm good guy, Alex Bennett. And I said to them, I said, you know, with my personality, that doesn't exactly fit. <laughs> and I suggested that we change it to, hi, I'm Alex Bennett. Some people call me a good guy. All right. And so that's how I did it. But I was the last guy to do that. But anyway, they gave me one of these shirts. Now, they have special shirts for those of us who work for the station. So we wouldn't muss our hair putting it on. It had a zipper, like right here. Oh. So that you could undo the zipper and just very carefully put it over your head and then zip it up. And I had one of those. And I just didn't, I, you know, I'm one of these kind of guys. I don't care. You know? They did that because hair is so important to radio? Oh, in those days, <laughs> yeah, course, right? it was very important. It was important to these guys. God, they had went out and paid 50 bucks to get a haircut, you know? <laughs> anyway, so uh, I... Uh, um, uh, I just never kept mine. Well, years later, I went, why didn't I keep one of those? You know? 
And so they started, yeah. somebody started putting these out, the one he's wearing. And I bought several of them, you know, but they look just like, am I right? Uh, right. They this, look just like the original. They do sell these in other colors. So, oh, oh that's this wrong. is the original. That's, that's wrong. Can't do yeah, it. I know. Me. Well, they are. <laughs> but what a great promotion that was, you know, it was terrific. Just terrific. I guess I guess radio stations were making money back then. They could give away stuff for free, huh? Yeah. I, I, I won one. Did you <laughs> oh, did you really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Like I called in a joke or something, or I wrote in a joke. See? Yeah, That's how you won them. Yep. Yeah. And and did you keep it? You know what? I gave it to a friend of mine for some reason. Like I think I had promised her I would give it to her. And I, like, I was like really mad that I did that, but. Well, you know, you won one. That's, you know, you yeah. got one of the originals. Yeah. 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 But am I right? They never I used, to to, I used to listen to the good guys all the time. Yeah. Did you ever yeah. remember me coming on? No, I think that was, I was, I was listening before you came on. I was like, I remember B, BMR, B Mitchell Reed and Dan Reed. Daniel and Harry Harrison. I remember those guys. And then ah, I yeah. there you go. probably just, Started. Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I stopped listening at some point. What? No. Wait. Wait. What is that? That's not a good guy's white shirt. That's a, a t-shirt. It's a good guy. It's not it's a good just, guy. It's on his phone. Uh. Yeah, man. I don't know. It says it's from the '60s. Vintage '60s WMCA good guy sweatshirt. It. It, 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 it would look just like the one. That uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Berger is wearing, right? Okay, so this is a sweatshirt, not a T-shirt. That looks so pretty. Like, it's um, the same. Well, yeah. no, he doesn't have a sweatshirt. Wait a minute. What, what was this? Was it a? Was were the? Uh, was the shirt cut off like this? That's not a T-shirt you're wearing, right, uh, Edward? Or is that? No, this this is a T-shirt. Oh, okay. They, that's, 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 that's not that's, really a. Yeah. That's not an official. It's got to be yeah. a sweatshirt. You're right. Mm. Yeah. But what you've got there doesn't look like the logo there, you know. This one says it's from the '60s. Yeah, but it yeah. doesn't say that it's from WMCA. Yeah, they did, didn't it? Uh, no, it says KISN. Oh, that's oh. another different station. No, uh, it's a ripoff. It's a ripoff. Right. Right. Somebody in another marketplace who uh, wanted to take that on as a imprint, as it were. Oh, here we go. Okay. Here you go. 240 bucks. It could be yours right there. 240 <laughs> bucks. I have one in the... No, uh, 240 bucks. Oh, but that's an original, right? That's yeah. an original. It, it claims to be, yes. How do you know it is? Well, there you go. See? Oh, a lot of ripoffs in t-shirts. Marjorie, you didn't know I used to be a big shot, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I met you on the damn slope. Yeah. <laughs> so there are a couple of things new today. I'm using a new audio system. But Here we go. Audio mixer. <laughs> Do I sound good? Yeah. <clears throat> I always sound good. Yeah. Well, this is really terrific. I mean, you can, I, I, but it's taking me forever to adjust it just right. It's like tuning a violin, you know. You're going to make those morning show sounds, you know, the crazy sounds for us? <laughs> uh, sure, we can do that. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Um, oh, how about... Uh, there we go. <laughs> or how about... Those are crickets. Can't hear that. Yeah. You, you got to raise the, the audio on a little bit. Uh, I That's about as loud as it would go. I don't know how, why it's not mm -hmm. coming out to you as loud. Right. What's you? What are you capturing it with? What am I capturing it with? Oh, yeah, you, you might be hearing it. You might not be hearing it on the. Uh, yeah, we're hearing it over your microphone. Yeah. We're hearing it from via. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you have it for direct line into Zoom. What if you took your headphones off? No, I have a direct it's line. But, well, wait, you see, into Zoom, you can't get a direct line in there. You got to run mm -hmm. through the run through OBS and then put it through, and you'll be mm -hmm. able to. Uh, I have to run it through OBS. And then use OBS virtual for in Zoom. This and should, then you can get your audio mixed. This should work, though. Ladies, you know what they're talking about. 
I just wanted to check. I just wanted to check. Wait, just in my my plumber said jiggle the handle. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, he's contributing. Uh, at least you can hear each other. I I don't know why that uh, because the audio is going out now. When I play one of these things, like an applause. Nope. Oh, that's not it. That's not what I. Is want. it because you have your headphones? Your headphone jack in? Yeah, no, I'm I'm listening to it. Okay, you should be able to hear it, but if you're not, I don't know why. Let me see here. Maybe mix your your microphone through it and then it into Zoom. Huh? What? Patch your mic through the board and then the board into Zoom as your microphone. Board into Zoom. Well, your your oh, the board the board is going into Zoom. Huh? Then the levels are off. I don't know. No, yeah, there's, there's, there's something. I find there's a problem with Zoom that anytime you play some music or something like that, it won't let, won't let it go through. Hmm. Uh, but I thought it would, so you know. Um, but it should because this is the output of the Road uh, Caster Pro, which is what this is, and it's going into the settings on the uh, Zoom, so it should work. You know, work. maybe maybe the flux capacitor is broken. Uh, <laughs> maybe the flux capacitor is broken. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, you got to get up to eighty-eight miles an hour. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I have no, I have no idea why, uh, why it's not, uh, why it's not going through because my mic is coming through the roadcaster, uh, but I guess it just didn't want to play any of these sound effects. So, you know. What have you? Yes, like Spannon is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> that that like went through. Spannon is still alive. That, that comes through. Wait a minute, that went directly through. Yeah, that, worked. Yeah. that was good. You heard that. Yeah, yeah, we heard that. Yeah. Yeah, but you didn't hear some of that other stuff. How about this? No, that's not going. Well, this is a test. There. Yes. The oh, there, there. That's going through. That's very strange. There are things that Zoom won't let thing let through, hmm. and other things that Zoom will. I have a closing theme for the show. It's soft, but it's playing. Yeah, yeah, but that's no, that's because it's coming through the microphone. So yeah. it it, uh, it it Zoom is very sensitive as to what it does, but it doesn't mind. Expanded is still alive. <laughs> okay, so and, and you're not. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> too soon. Oh, oh well, too what? soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Uh, anyway, so um, it's boy, is it? I've got the air conditioning up full. And it's hot in here. It was 110 here on Saturday. It's ridiculous. Hmm. Marjorie and I have had a little, it's not an argument. I, I have a theory and she doesn't know if it's the right theory or not. And the, it, it, is my voice sounding good, by the way? Not it's fake, fine. Not yeah. faking in and out or anything like that. No. Okay, because I have a high pass filter on here so that it does. you can't hear the air conditioner because it, it filters it out. But sometimes my voice might not go in. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Anyway, Marjorie and I, here's the argument we've got. Um, I, it's hot, and the front of the house, you don't turn on the air conditioner. There are no air conditioners there. They got pulled out, and we've just never put new ones in, because if we turn those on along with the rest of it, we blow the fuse. Okay? So we don't have any out there. And so for the summer, we move into the back rooms where Marjorie has on the air conditioner and I have the air conditioner on in here and um, whatever. But out in the living room, it gets horribly. Oh. And Marjorie insists because it's good for air flow, she feels, that we keep the windows open. But the airflow in these apartments used to work really well when the high, you know, we have windows up high that open up and you could open up those transoms. And you can get airflow through the entire apartment. Mm -hmm. But with the windows open now, there's no real airflow, only hot air coming in. So my theory is 
you don't leave the windows open. Am I right? Am I wrong? I leave it up well, to... Well, we close them to see. I, I vote you keep them closed if it's warmer outside than it is inside. Is Does this, this light hit directly on those windows? Uh, sometimes. Not all day. Mm. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll be the day. judge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's Judge Andrews. Let's get Judge Andrews' opinion. Yeah. <laughs> If if there isn't a cross breeze, opening them is isn't going to help. But if air can cross in one window and out the other, it will It'll create a breeze. In other words, if there's no air for a cross flow, yeah, we do have it, no, it, uh, the it open a little bit in the kitchen, but not a lot. But about I don't two inches. I don't know if, if it's enough for air flow if, through there. If the air can flow between two windows that are on different different surfaces, you'll get a cross freeze and it'll give a sensation that it's cooler. If if it's just open in one place, it probably isn't going to do anything. Yeah, well, we she had all three windows open. Sorry. She had mm. all three windows open. Yeah, but they all face the same. There was no Yeah, problem. it's all in one one room, all facing the same way. So that's not yeah. gonna help. <clears throat> <clears throat> Unless you unless you want to put a fan to create some sort of convection. We have fans. We have ceiling fans in every room. But all that does is give you a sensation of being cooler. It doesn't actually cool the room. Do you have an indoor thermometer? Uh, uh it's kind of. I don't think it works. Open the no, open the window for like an hour, four... look at the thermometer, close it and look at it again. Um yeah, that might that might be a good idea. Yeah. But have multiple been... thermometers. How hot is it in Texas? Uh, uh, of course, you've got a nice breeze coming through now, don't you, with a hurricane? 75 well, miles. Yeah, we've got a, it's overcast, so it's not so hot. What's the temperature right now? It's um, 89 degrees right now. Yeah, oh, my well. 91 in New York. Yeah, it says 91 yeah. in New York. How hot is it where you are, Paula? Uh, it's in the 80s. It's not, it's not too bad here. Really, about eighty six, eighty seven here. Okay, yeah, which which means we we get uh, the weather that we get uh, um, seems to flow towards the east coast, so you should be getting some relief soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, we let's hope, hope. Let's hope so. Here's what I have. I have one of those now, and I never find it never works right. That's what it tells you: oh. is temperature inside, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But if you could have multiples of that and put them in different places. They, you you yeah. should get the correct temperature. Work. Do you air condition your home? Yeah. 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 How how bad is the bill? Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to, <laughs> Probably too much. We'll have to ask Pam next time she drops by. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and how hot is it in, in uh, your neck of the woods, Charlene? Uh, right now it's eighty five, but it was. 100 plus all last week. Uh, plus? And you're yeah, it's been ridiculous. Dublin, California. Oh, Dublin. Uh, yeah, you're on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. The bay, the difference between your temperature and the bay itself is like 20 degrees on a hot day. You yeah, know? usually, but it was pretty hot over there last week, too. Yeah. <clears throat> How about where you are, Len LaFrisco? It was 110 on Saturday. It's about 90 now, going to 108 by Wednesday. So it's staying hot. It's supposed to go a hot. Where are you? Uh, Livermore. I'm 10 miles further east than her. Right. You're again on the other side of the uh, the of the tunnel, as I like to think. Of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's in Contra Costa County, and that gets very hot. It's you know? very hot. Yeah. Very hot. Uh, you know what? You know what's interesting, and I've often found this was true. Mm. Uh, when something changes about your appearance, you think everybody's going to go, "Oh, you did this," or "Oh, you did that." Here we go. And nobody ever sees when something has changed. First thing I noticed when you turned on the Zoom. Really? Yeah. First what, thing I noticed. Don't like say, he's don't back say to the yet. class. Don't, don't say it yet. Don't say oh, it. Oh, sorry. Anybody sorry. else notice anything different? Yes. Okay, don't say it. Uh, anybody else? See what I'm talking about? Tomorrow, you could cut that beard off, Mike. <laughs> and people will, will say something like, hmm, 
Looking good, Mike. Um, lose weight? Lose a little weight? Yeah. <laughs> the last thing they will come up with is you cut your beard off. Yeah, mm. no. It was the first thing I noticed when, because you look classic to me. It's like, oh, he's back to his uh, classic look with the mustache. This is classic? Well, back in the day when you were broadcasting, didn't you just have a mustache? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, classic. <laughs> well, what happened to me today is I was, uh, I take my, uh, my trimmer and I take the the uh, thing off of it and then I just go in and get everything really tight, you know, shave it off, right? Where the other one's going to lower it, you know, it's going to lower whatever the amount. So I uh, was doing that and I was so out of it that I went to kind of <laughs> care of some little problems and I took a big chunk of my beard off. <laughs> now there was no going back. Yeah, you know, have you done that? Mm -hmm. Mike, have you done? Yeah, that? oh yeah. My really? granddaughter decided to. Uh, we we had a we had a, a a makeover day, and she took a huge chunk off of it. This is around the holiday season. That's why I had no beard over Christmas this year. Yeah, because there's no going back. You gotta you gotta normalize mm -hmm. everything, right? <clears throat> How fast does it take you to grow that beard? Uh, I could probably have this in a month. Really. Yeah. See, I don't grow that fast. You know, uh, this yeah. will take uh, probably in a month. You'll start seeing that it looks like a beard again. I shaved this morning, so I don't know. Yeah, so. <laughs> 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 but you trim it so it goes down to a certain length, right? Of course. Yes. I probably take the trim part off and just do the clipper part and get the kind of even it out and everything like that, right? Well, that's I never take the I never take the the guard off. Otherwise, I'll do exactly what you did. <laughs> well, one time I went to a, a wedding, and it was getting all prepared, and I figured, well, I trim it down. That's all, just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Make everything look nice. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I took off the adjustment, and I go. Mm. <laughs> I go, oh my god i got a big slot right in there so the the next thing at this and guys no you gotta take they you gotta take them all off and i went to that wedding with no beard <laughs> and how many people came up to you and said where's the beard yeah oh you look different what's what's going on yeah yeah, yeah. stuff like that i i, I, I shaved what? I shaved mine off after 9-11. I was living overseas and I came into the country and it was still the Whack and Hut security guys. Mm -hmm. And the, the guy looked at me and he said, hey, Osama, have a seat. We have to search you. Oh, I, said, I said, who's Osama? And he said, don't be smart with me or you'll find out what a real search feels like. And I got, oh, hassled, all nice. the air I got hassled all the way through the airport. And when I got where I was going, I shaved off the beard. And nobody hassled me since. Never that was in the states. That was like in New York, Michigan. I in was in Michigan on business. Yeah. I come. I had come up. I was living in Brazil at the time. I had come up for a meeting, and and got hassled like crazy. And well, then then uh, Mike is going to really be in trouble because he looks like yeah. a, a terrorist. <clears throat> That's for sure. Yeah. Holy smokes! That escalated quickly. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, I just said with, with Andrew's story. Holy smokes! That escalated quickly. Like, oh, like, it was it was ugly. Because I, I wasn't I wasn't rude back to him the way I would wanted to be because he's the security guy. This is pre TSA, but uh, I mean it was basically sit your ass down, Osama. We're going to search you, and I'm like I'm not I'm not even of Middle Eastern descent. What are you talking about? <laughs> and and it was like you you wise up and you'll get the real search kind of thing. Jeez, wow. Yeah, and it then was, when I got it to, was it was an ugly time. Yeah, yeah. and then and then I walked down to the gate, and before I got on the plane, I got physically searched in front of all the other passengers. What wow. last name is literally the English translation for German? Like what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be right. He didn't. He didn't seem to give a a a, a, yeah. a poop. <laughs> a I, I, I went to uh, Vegas about a year and a half ago, and mm -hmm. I got searched going in and coming out. Well, that I, I understand. Why did the search think? Do I look like a terrorist? To me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, I, uh, when I, I, I went through it and they uh, put, they put me through hell and they kept me. And what, you remember that Marjorie where they kept me for a while? Was I with you? Yeah. You were with me. We were going to Europe, I think, or something like that. We had to make our plane and, and they, they found something with me that looked suspicious to them. Mm. And they then, they then made me go through the full kid. thing with the full body scan and, and take everything out of your pockets and so on and so forth. And when I well, left, when I finally left, I noticed that I forgot my wallet. Nobody ran after me to say, hey, here's your wallet. Is, you know, I mean, it was. It, were, you, were you with Marjorie when that happened? Yeah. Well, that explains Marjorie it. They couldn't went figure out. They, they had to be something <laughs> wrong that someone like her. <laughs> Uh, her no, her no, style, much. class, and elegance was with you. Well, <laughs> with he must have was. been a hostage. <laughs> show you how much Marjorie cares about me. She started walking ahead and went to the gate and then suddenly realized I wasn't behind her. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, I think, I she came back and you said, what's happening? And I said, oh, they're just doing this and that and everything else. Yeah. Hmm. But I can't I remember some, how they found me suspicious. What? I had something similar happen to me, and and uh, I think it was the the, uh, the Munich airport. Um, um, there was a, a dog, a, a sniffer dog, and it was kind of like, oh, isn't that cute? And and he stopped me, and it was because I had mis mistaken that I had put uh, um, like an apple or some 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 produce in 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 my bag, and I didn't realize that that I shouldn't have done that. And I got separated from the, the group and went through a whole thing. You can't have an apple in your in your. It was some, some no. fresh fruit. No, you can't. You can't transport fresh fruit between countries. I've seen yeah. it at the U.S. airport where the the dogs go around and they catch you with food in your bag. It's a huge fine. Surprise wanna, the hell out of I, me! <laughs> I forget the number, but it was like I can't believe you can get fined mm -hmm. that much for that. If I you like come back from Europe with fruit or whatever, yeah. Well, yeah but it doesn't seem. It seems like it's the other country that should care about the fruit. You know, they won't let you in with the fruit. No, Not, but you can't get out of the country with the fruit. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Well, they they they, they know where you're going. They want it gone. I mean, it's like for example, say you get on a flight and mm -hmm. you don't have a visa for the country you arrive in. And when you get there and you get to customs and they go, oh, you, you don't have a visa to be here, the airline takes a huge fine. <clears throat> that's why they're oh, wow. so careful about it. the story i told you about saudi arabia if they if they land and they haven't put away every empty little bottle of alcohol on the plane and inventoried it the flight crew can go to jail for coming into an arab into saudi arabia with with open containers in the plane that are that aren't locked up wow um, it's crazy the rules that they they've got to deal with oh boy well we're going to be traveling soon mm. We keep saying that you don't see us going anywhere. Well, we're looking into one specific thing. There's we're looking into the Lurian Express the entire trip. Wow! Yeah. Wonderful. Wow! Yeah. That that could be fun, but the whole trip, not just a couple. Well, days. the only worry I have about it is we are Jewish, and we're going to be Alex, going to a lot of on. countries. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. it's not on your passport, right? <laughs> You just mean? keep your pants on; they won't be able to tell. Yeah, but it, but it's on my nose, okay? <laughs> Not really. Nose. I'll stand separately. They don't do a circumcision check. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is that uh, it goes through a lot of countries uh, uh, in the Middle East, you know. So I don't know. I mean, I, I in fact, I don't know if that full blown Orient Express still goes anymore. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. Really. I yeah, I saw the movie last night. Is that good? <coughs> yeah, well, the, part, the original one or the remake? not the original, the second one, the, the, the second modern. One was good. Yeah, very good. It was very good. I wonder if they have like a uh, a murder uh, <laughs> the they put in the Orient Express. Yeah, to make it lively. To make it lively. Yeah. How long of a trip is it, Marjorie? Is it pretty long? Yeah, I think the, the the long one is about 15 days, maybe 20. Wow. Go to India? It, I'm not it, sure. I'm looking. I'm trying to remember where the original Orient Express went, but it left, I think, Rome. 
Am I, uh, maybe I'm no, wrong. it leaves in the Far East, Alex. You may actually be able to catch it in in uh, in France, and then you just keep going. You know. No, it start well. It starts, I think, in the Far East. No, that coming this way. Yeah. That way. But we're going to come this way. Oh, you want to start in the Far East? Yeah. And then go go to Paris. Oh. Yeah, and then Paris. Uh, do, you, do you stay on the same trains or do, or with yeah. different countries? It's really, booked, it's booked like a like a boat trip. Yep. So you have your room, you have your little lounge area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you know, like I, I, I remember having the experience. It was a long time ago of being in Italy and uh, uh, going from France to Italy by train. We had your your L passes. Well, that's your real. And and, and you had to change trains because the tracks were different. Yeah, but this is different. This, this is was different. this was a, a railroad train mm. that literally went. Oh to, yeah, I know. Uh, went to the went on its whole trip, you know, and it goes through some amazing countries, from what I understand. Mm. You know, there there are countries out there we don't even know of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but they have a name, you know. Yeah. Like old, oh, what's his name? Like what? What's his name? What? Names that we can never remember. Uzbekistan. I'm pretty good. Uzbekistan. We never remember that one. A lot of the stands we don't remember. Yeah. You know what stand means? I bet. I bet uh, our our good friend uh, Andrew knows. I went to college with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was from Nowhereistan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to a, t a country called I Don't Understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, the stand means land. Yeah. That's uh, the soon. And so you got a whole bunch of stands there. I mean, a lot of them. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the map. It, it doesn't go through um, Arab countries. Just, just Istanbul, Turkey. It's the only... Yeah, but then where does it go? What is it, it goes from from France to Turkey. So you go France, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Turkey. No, I think there's oh, one that doesn't goes go beyond Turkey. Mm, yeah, you get a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the map I'm looking at it, it doesn't. Mm. Because I seem to think that the big thing about the Orient Express is it traveled between. Europe and the and the Far East and maybe into China. Maybe China, isn't that the it's, Orient? It is the Far East. It is the Far East. It starts in the Far East. <laughs> the grand suite on this train is fifty eight thousand pounds. Whoa. It's, it's pretty well, heavy. We're not staying in the grand suite, Marjorie. <laughs> the historic <laughs> one is seventeen five for the for, for a double. Jeez. Seventeen basic. We can afford that. That would be within our We're just looking. I don't want to brag. That's within our budget. Um, <laughs> for for that long on the train. Well, you really want to have yourself a good accommodation on a long Absolutely. trip like that. You know. Yeah. I honestly think that, by the way, and I mean, not to bring anything down or anything, mm -hmm. I think Rick would fucking love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He'd probably come with us. Rick would well, come. Well, that's what with I'm saying. Like, that's. that's yeah. I think he, that, he would think that that is totally apt, that trip. It's yeah. fantastic. What? What? I love it. Who? What? Bring, it, bring his bring ashes. Well, I listen, I was thinking of uh, of um, going to uh, um, a lot of the places that he went to. I mean, it, it, the, what do you call it? The, uh, Darwin's place, uh, the uh, Galapagos. That's yeah. a great place. He, loved the, he said that was one of the best trips he ever took, was the Galapagos. Yeah. And then, of course, he warned me about the penguins in uh, in the Arctic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's several different routes for the Orient Express. Yeah. Oh, there, are. There, are, there are. Well, there are. I think that what they've done is they've created a business out they of the Express. It up. They yeah. it up. Yeah. Right. Which, which is wonderful. There are several places. Maybe you can do three days on the Orient Express, and then you come back and tell everybody, guess what I was on? But we want to take the one they used to have, the one that the it, original one. If people took to get somewhere exotic, I think my my daughter in law ex experienced that. But uh, she mentioned that the um, 
the trip she had she went through Russia. So there must have been a variety of Orient Express. Wow. Yeah. I, probably. I'll yeah. have to do a little reading on the Orient Express, but it, when it sounds I, amazing, it's what a I'm great idea. It out. I'm checking it out. But if it, yeah. all it's going to do is take us from like you know Paris to Rome, I I don't want to take the Orient Express. No. <laughs> the one I was looking at was Uriel Istanbul. Pass. You take the Eurail. Yeah, take the take a Mediterranean cruise and go between places. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, we we, we that would be uh, maybe we wind up somewhere and then we could hop on something else or do something else or. Yeah, yeah. I want to do a URL next year. I think too. That seems really interesting. Oh, yeah. I love. It. Well, you buy one ticket and you can go for what? A couple of weeks or something. You, you can you pick the length or whatever you want. A month, and you can have eight fly, eight segments within that month or something, and yeah, and it's cheap. I mean, it's a few hundred euro. Yeah. Well, the way it used to work was you just you bought the URL pass, and you could it, it took you all over Europe. You yeah, just that's what this didn't is, have I to think, make yeah. you didn't have to make reservations. That was your ticket. You just got on the train and well, off. Yeah. Yeah. To. yeah. It was wonderful. Do we know mm -hmm. at Serafin e Castillo? Yeah, we've I've seen that name before. Where have we seen that? Is it an alias for somebody? Well, I'm thinking it might be somebody trying to get in that I mm -hmm. that I was keeping off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give Keep it a shot. Off. Keep them off. Yeah, Keep I mean, come on. Yeah. The, that last off. new newcomer was so much fun. Maybe we'll. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. Did I miss yeah. one? <laughs> what do we that's, have? A, that's the one I keep refusing, and he tried yeah, to well, that's back good. today, that's and then he went, got off, but then this came on. Yeah, I'm keep refusing that. Huh? I feel like I missed one. Refusing him. I, I think you did, Mike. He was. Yeah. He wasn't. A, he wasn't a good fit for the group. No, he wasn't. No. He didn't stop talking. Well, you. Oh, yeah. I know that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was here. I think. Yes, 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 yes. I know who you're talking about. You guys are very protective of the group. And if you're listening, don't call. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Some more subtle than others. Yeah. Well, I don't like not to let people on. You know, but because there's certain people, Alex, so there's certain people that it, it becomes a he became a little uh, what's uh, interruptive, yeah, and it was difficult to kind of just go to every well, yeah, that's my damn job. Conversation. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> <laughs> damn it. yeah, but uh, we, we no, uh, what's her name again today? Uh, Mandy, yeah, two weeks in a row. Wow, yeah, she wrote last week to tell me. That she wasn't on because she was busy and whatever. Is she sending me a note today? Uh, doesn't look like it. No, no. Uh -uh. Uh. I'll be back in the fall. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Last time I was here, Brian Neary had a new boss. Has he been back since? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's been, yeah. He's yeah. solid. Yeah, he's been back. By the way, I'll miss next week. Why? Because I'll be on the road back from Chicago, my family reunion. Oh, your family reunion. Oh, yeah. yeah. How right. big is your family, Charlie? How many right. people? Usually about 50 or 60 people. Wow. Oh. Wow. That's a lot of Wallaces. <laughs> oh, I think they're pronounced Walleye. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Canada. No, I'm not, I'm not. Make sure you go eat at the bear while you're there. I'm not going to say screw your family. We need you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know. That, that means Len has to wear a funny t shirt next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find one. Yeah. Yeah. It's your job, Len. Get one that says, <laughs> I stole this from Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see here. What else is happening? Um, let me see. I can't remember what's happening. Did you see uh, the new Axel? Yeah, I just had a Biden moment. Excuse me. What? Yeah, yeah. Did you see the new Axel Foley, the the yeah. Beverly Hills Cop? I like it. Huh? Oh, I pretty that. entertaining. It's very right. entertaining. Yeah, he was. He stepped right back into that old character, that charming guy that everybody fell in love with back. Yeah. What, what platform is that on? Do you know? On Netflix. 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 TV. Netflix. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Marjorie <laughs> wouldn't watch it with Marjorie wouldn't watch it with me. And then after I was through watching it, I went, boy, that was entertaining. Yeah. You never told me about it. What? <laughs> what did you say, Marjorie? You never told me about it. Yes, I did. Hayden. What? Mm -hmm. The the the, the Beverly Hills Hayden. Cop movie, the new Beverly Hills Cop movie. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I didn't. I said, "Do you want to watch it?" You no, said, no. "No, you didn't. No, you didn't." Yes, I did. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, it's, like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like being married to Joe Biden. Like, I hate when mom and dad are married. It's a marriage and family court that I preside over. <laughs> <laughs> But with that movie, talk about a movie that combines the idea of a sequel and a remake at the same time. Man, were a lot of the beats in that movie similar to the beats in the very first movie. Oh, and it was, uh, but I loved it. I thought it was really, really good. I, I, I really thought, did. yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad you all agree because I, I felt what I'm enjoying this. Why? Why am I enjoying I'll watch it with you, Alex? What? I'll watch it with you. I've already <laughs> seen it. Well, you'll watch it <laughs> again. You know how many times I've had to watch things the second time because she wouldn't see me the first time when I said, do you want to watch this? And she said mm -hmm. to me, no, it's not my thing. That's how she puts it. And so she said she didn't want to watch it. So I went and watched. I said, do you mind if I watch it? And you said, no, I don't mind. And I went into the other room and watched it. And I thought I'd watch it for five minutes and then check out. An hour and a half, two hours later, I went, hey, that's that was pretty good. I had a good time. And for 63, Eddie Murphy looks fantastic. Yeah. Really 63. But, oh, God. I, I hate to say this in front of Charlie, but Charlie looks good for 70 something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Black, yeah. black people don't age badly. Black, black don't crack. crack. Unless, <laughs> unless you're a blues musician, in which case you have to look <laughs> old at 47. <laughs> yeah. But blacks, uh, there's something about their skin that maintains its uh, elasticity for quite a long time. Whites have thin skin. Well, there's no, no, we know yeah. that, you know. <laughs> well, so there we go. Yeah. Um, but um, blacks you, don't crack. Francine, have you seen anything lately that you liked? Well, I, you know, I tried to watch um, the movie New York, New York, like that. Yeah. Wait a minute. That what old happened? movie? Yeah. Right. Scorsese. Right. And uh, I just couldn't believe how mean Robert De Niro was. Like it was kind of I know he was doing his Robert De Niro thing, but I don't know if anybody have, any of you have seen that movie. He can't play he's kind of a prick. Yeah. But what he movie? always does. No, but he always does. He's oh he's he was doing the De Niro character, but for some reason in this movie. It, it was uh, New York, New York. It was hmm. hard to take because I think because he was trying to be the romantic lead and he was so mean to Liza Minnelli's character. And I kept saying like, and afterwards they had a commentary. Mary, Mario Cantone was saying to um, Ben Mankiewicz, well, you're not, you're not a gay man and you're not a woman. So you wouldn't understand that. And I thought, I'm a woman. I wouldn't take that from a man like he was so mean to her from from, from, from the get-go so mm. i don't know i i stopped watching it oh i just started but, um, watching for the first time in mm. how many years of uh, the way we were that was just so wow. too. That's yeah great i'm afraid movie. of watching the whole thing because it always makes me cry at the end oh mm. and i'll tell you why i was interviewing um marvin hamlet Mm -hmm. And I said, you and that damn movie, you wrote that damn song, right? <laughs> and he said, well, what do you mean? I said, every time I see the movie and that song comes on, I start crying. Oh. He said, that's because I put the crying notes in there. <laughs> I, said, I said, what? He said, there are certain chords you can hit or certain series of notes you can hit in anything that yeah. will make people start crying. Oh, I love that. That's cool. And he said, mm -hmm. it's in that song. He said, I arranged it that way. He never he never uh, explained what those notes mm -hmm. were. But he said, that's why you that's why you react to that. The song was written. What was the, what was the song? I'm sorry. The way we were. The way 
we were. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. I feel like that about Sind and the Clowns. Mm -hmm. That Here's a, I don't know how people get through singing that. It's so sad, you know? Yeah. You don't bring me flowers anymore. Whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! My, my question is: Is there a particular movie that will make you? And this is the, the guys too, because we do mm. bell up sometimes. No, like, Brian's song. song Brian's song. Alex, right? you bell. Brian's song. Yeah. Brian's song. That's a good one. Really, Brian. Brian's song. song. Uh, my mom told me I could never watch that movie again because I probably sob for. 45 minutes <laughs> after it was over. I'll tell you the movie that <laughs> what I movie, just. Charlene, every, what movie? Ryan's song. Uh, you can uh, the movie that did it for me, and you can uh, uh, just show me the final scene from that movie, and I will start crying. And that's um, uh, Umbrellas of Cherbourg. And Great. it's, it's a love story about you know people who miss their connection with each other, oh. and at the very end they meet up again, and it's snowing. And it's oh. a gas station, and they both decide their lives have turned out happier than they would have had they been with each other or whatever. And he leaves, she leaves, and then his family comes up, and the child runs over to him, and it's snowing. And the music that's playing is uh, the, the the whole film is an opera, really. They sing all the dialogue. Really. And one of the songs is Memory, not oh, that is song, songs, the way we were. Uh, if you, we live forever, I will, uh, oh, what's the song? Oh, I will yeah. wait for you. If I live forever, I will wait for you. Da, 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 da. Well, this starts playing as it's snowing and the kid's running over to dad and the mom is standing there going like, I wonder who that woman was that just left. And it, da, 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 and I just you know, started start bawling like a baby, you know. Well, yeah. what's the name of the movie? The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Uh, and it's it's an opera. Uh, and it, everybody sings talking. the dialogue, and it's really a wonderful movie. Just a wonderful movie. M music by Michelle Legrand, and uh, um, that that's the movie that will always make me cry. And I think the way we were. The very ending will make me cry, and I, I you know, I'm, now when I pass the Plaza Hotel, I start crying. You know, <laughs> you know what? I, I always wondered about Michelle Lebrecht. I mean, I, I, the, the music that he wrote was really good, yeah. but could that have been his real name? Michelle Legrand. Michelle Legrand. As far as I know, you know, he was a jazz musician. A I got to like him as a jazz musician years ago. But doesn't that sound like a phony name? Michelle so so Grand? 11, but maybe. Well, does Alex <laughs> Bennett sound like a made up name? It is a made up name. Hmm. Mm. I don't think he made it up. It, it would be Michelle the Grand, you know. The Grand is a common name. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's a common name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not, uh, uh, you know. But. Uh, um, so, great. <laughs> and they also have a movie that makes them cry. I think the modern one is uh, Marley and Me. It really, yeah. I hear that one. I won't watch it because it's about yeah. a dog and a guy and a dog dies at the end. And then I will cry and I don't want to do that. For me, it's any movie with Paulie Shore, but I just cry because I wasted my damn time. <laughs> 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 I, I cry at the drop of a hat now. Um, ever since I turned, I don't know, I'm going to say 45 maybe. I'm 48 now. I think I cry at, like, I cry at the, if, if a Gillette commercial is done right, I cry at that. Like, <laughs> Great <laughs> commercials, yeah. And that is going to lose the beard. I'm saying, like, yeah, no, it's, um, like, Goodwill Hunting did it, did it for me. The Green oh, Mile did it for me. Oh, um, I mean, I, I cry over the Brooklyn. In terms of endearment. I, I cry over the Brooklyn Bridge because it has to go to Brooklyn all by itself. <laughs> Francine, what makes you cry? What movie made you cry? Weathering Heights, you, you know, with Heathcliff and bringing Kathy to the window. Oh, my God, that always makes you cry. Terms of Endearment, Sophie's Choice. You know, oh, 
Wow. Oh, yeah. So good choice. Yeah. Good choice. yeah. yeah. Mm. That's brutal. And when you're in a movie theater and you're trying not to cry out loud, yeah. it's like, oh. Well, it's like you're a guy and you're at the movie with a woman and you don't want to see have her see you cry. What is he, a sissy, or what's his problem? No, you know what movies? It seems like a lot of men cry at E.T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, that might be the first movie that brought me to tears when I was a kid. I was a kid, like nine, and I watched that and I cried. I have a problem with I have a problem with that film because I know the woman that played E.T. What? She was a midget. I it was a woman in that suit. Really? Yeah. In most of it, not all of it, but most of it. The same yeah. where she goes up the uh, the ramp up back into the. Uh, oh area. yeah. She uh, she did that one. She said they had to do that over about thirty times because her feet, which were of course little alien feet with little suction cups on them and everything like that, kept getting stuck in the grating and pulling off as she started walking. <laughs> it kills my theory, though. I thought ET stood for extra testicle. It couldn't be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, she... it's a medical. It's a medical movie, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Actually, it was. It was a. Uh, the movie was made after a Latino guy named Eddie Torme. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. Let's not make fun of E.T. Let's just cry over it. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually an old teaching and I mean, routine. I never thought an ugly looking little troll going up a ramp with a, a potted plant would make me cry. Well, you know, the, the critics t uh, talked about it as a, a boy and his dog. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's a yeah, boy. Totally. Dog. It's 100%. absolutely what it is. Yeah. Sports movies can do it sometimes. A lot of sports movies can have some drama to the point where when they either win or when they lose, uh, you know, Miracle on Ice, or, or there's, there's, there's other ones too. Sports movies are pretty good at, at, at well, listening. The one movie that made you, tried to make you cry was the Babe Ruth story. With John Goodman? No, not that one. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> William Bendix. Yeah. And he's in the hospital, and he's been told that he has to have an operation, but it may not work. But if it if it if, but if it does work, it will save millions of lives because they will know something by doing it. And the babe goes, "Well, life's been good to me, and the people have been good to me. Yes, I'll take a chance." And then all of a sudden, you, outside this window, there's this choir of kids singing, "Take me out to the ball game," oh. <laughs> and it starts swelling. Okay. Boom swelling take me out to the ball game the camera's going back and you know they're rolling him down the hall okay take me out to the crowd and then they show jets going overhead and then kids sliding into first base and the umpire going you're out and the kid going you know i'm out you know you're out you know and then it goes it, 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 as all those scenes of kids playing baseball are going on the narrator says that day Babe Ruth did more in his life and he will be remembered wherever there's a bat, a ball, and a boy. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. Right. It's good. The one that got me was the Lou Gehrig story. I, I refuse, oh, wow. but yes. wait a minute. I refuse yes. to cry at that. Because it's <laughs> it's trying to manipulate me. But yeah. it's, 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 it's like Don crap. Giller tries to manipulate me. <laughs> well, that's, the, that's the writing. They try and manipulate you. A comedian's trying to do the same thing to make you laugh. It's just good writing. Yeah. That's a great line. That last line with the alliteration: a bat, a ball, and a boy. Are you Wherever there'd be a bat, yes. a ball, and a boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's killer. I, I thought of a I thought of a modern example: the end of uh, and it's a one of the biggest movies of all time. The end of Avengers Endgame. What? When Tony, <laughs> when Tony Stark dies. When Tony uh -huh. Stark dies at the end of that movie. Oh, yeah. Um, I w remember seeing that in the theater. I saw it in the theater three times, and all three times there was not a dry eye in the house. Yeah, but that's not the very end of the movie. The very end of the movie is if I... No, that's the end. When he snaps his finger and he sacrifices himself... No, no. The very end of the movie is out in the woods, and it's uh, what's his the name? Funeral? In America, and the original woman 
who oh yeah, yeah 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 but i'm just saying that but, oh, there was that last scene the last scene of uh, um carter yeah with cap with captain america and carter uh what's her name yeah agent yeah agent yeah carter. that was sweet but when tony died everybody cried mm -hmm. Not me. That would be bored the crap out of oh, me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pop, pop, pop it in. Pop the Blu-ray in. I bet you it gets you. If you watch that last battle. If and I then... watch it, will you give me back an hour, two hours of my life? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you liked Avengers. You don't like Avengers? I got tired of it. Uh, you know, those last two movies, Infinity War and Endgame, are like masterpieces. I mean, I, I, that was a sucker's bet. You got to see all the movies in order to un understand what goes on in the final episode. So I the comic book. That's how comic books work. Every you issue. Not owe me, you not only owe me two and a half hours of my life, you also owe me all the other hours in watching all the movies that ah, I that. Oops. Mm. That's what comic book fans you're in for. Yeah. That's why Marvel nailed it. The Geller's yeah. Geller's here. Hello. Hey, look at that guy. Hey, hey you cut off your goatee. Yeah. <laughs> in error. In error. <laughs> Does it make me look older? Yes. yes. <laughs> Classic. Okay, thank you. I think I think it's the toupee. <laughs> Seriously, kidding. I thought it was Tom Selleck hosting this show at first. Who? I said seriously, I thought it was Tom Selleck hosting this show I, at first. Okay. <laughs> the best mustache ever. What you up to, Giller? Uh, I'm I'm crying at the end of 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this disney will do it to you every time actually yeah. well, well if we're gonna bring up letterman if we're gonna bring up don your letterman the 9-11 speech every single year i watch it every single year i cry with dave's 9-11 response really yeah i mean it was good but it never made me cry when he talks about that town in mm -hmm. montana raising money for new york and if that doesn't uh, if that doesn't show you what America's all about, I got nothing. Yeah, like, well, oh, where are God. they? Where are they now that we need them? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Paula, I stepped on you. You're right. Disney does it every time. Yeah. You know, you know I'm just thinking that it, it's hard to think about America right now as in sentimental terms. Yeah, that's for sure. I like the hot dogs. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, there are certain things that are iconic in America and that we take as being iconic things, but they don't really exist that much anymore. Yeah, you know, but whatever. So, uh, so what do you what are you doing, Giller? Just well, you're uh, a couple done. of nights ago. I I, I put up uh, on my on my YouTube channel uh, a 22 minute radio broadcast from 1963 uh, in honor of. Uh, of, of a DJ uh, named Dick Summer. He, he, he I was know Dick a, Summer. I work with Dick Summer. He he passed away in May, which I didn't. I wasn't aware of until a couple of nights ago. Yeah, yeah. I worked and he with was Dick Summer at uh, WMCA. Matter of fact. Yeah, I think that was after I I I knew of him when he was at WBZ in Boston. Mm -hmm. he and I was a huge fan when, of that. When he came to WMCA. He had been in at WBZ in Boston. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's gotten the response I expected, like 500 views, <laughs> but, 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 but also, the people, he, the also, fan, he also did the commercials for what he was the voice of some product for years. Bender and Bender. Bender and Bender. That's it. Boy, you're what, where, what? Wow. <laughs> that that's why from? you keep me around here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that about him, that he did these commercials for years for Bender and Bender? Who are you asking? You. Uh, and uh, I think, but let's say no. Oh, <laughs> easy, that one. Yeah, he did them for Bender and Bender, and he did uh, he did a lot of poetry albums and stuff like that, where he read these poems, which when he used to read me some of them, I thought they were terrible. When he was at WBZ, he did the uh, eleven thirty p.m. to five thirty a.m. show. Yeah. Um, wow, that's a long time. And yeah. it was just, it was essentially alternate radio, where he would he wouldn't play the hits. He played stuff. Uh, uh, I wrote about this in, in the descriptions of this thing. He he. Um, uh, he wrote. Uh, he would play. Uh, 
Tom Rush's demo of Joni Mitchell's um, Urge for Going. Mm -hmm. uh, this is in 66, 67. Uh, he, uh, um, he played uh, Jim and Jean's The Crucifixion, which was uh, a cover of Phil Oakes' song th that he would then release a year later. Uh, he, he championed, quote, the Boston sound, unquote. Um, uh, and he, uh, I, I, mean, I, that, that I was, was a, a, the small time period of time where the Boston sound was available. And if, I can't remember some of the groups. Uh, Orpheus, uh, um, Ultimate Spinach. He was a big, a big, uh, you uh just know by the names, they were terrible groups, but that uh, it didn't matter. That, that, uh, I mean, who uh, names their group Ultimate Spinach? My favorite group. <laughs> don't, don't talk to me like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, quiet. I'm a fan of the Screaming Trees. <laughs> well, the squirrel nut zippers. So it continues to this day. The 13th floor elevators. <laughs> they were good. They were good. They had one big yeah. hit. What was it? Napoleon uh, actually, the 14th. You're going to miss me, and I helped produce that record. Mm. Yeah. Hey, um, Don also posted something else very cool on his channel a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you talked about it, but he posted the Beatles' first appearance yeah, on the Tonight yeah. Show. Yeah, he did. He was, uh, last yeah, I talked week. about it on, uh, what's it called? Gamble? Ramble. That's it. Ramble. Ramble. Yeah. Did you go on the Ramble again? I'm there every night. I'm there. I'm God there nights it. when he's not there. Oh, <laughs> too much to watch. He keeps trying. I keep seeing him come up on Zoom. It, it's ridiculous. <laughs> hey, you know we've run out of time here. Oh, this no. is a great one, guys. I, I'm grateful to have all of you in my life. Well, we're grateful to have you here. Okay, I agree. Like, I'm grateful I mean, to have I'm, you all here. I was can looking I, at. Can that. I? Can I just say that I I have no idea who Binder and Binder is. But I thought that Edward Berger's timing was impeccable. It was impeccable. <laughs> when it isn't was it? Just impeccable. That's because, always impeccable. You'd have to know who Dick Summer was to begin with. <laughs> then you'd have to know that he did Bender and Bender. <laughs> and the only reason I know it is I would see a Bender and Bender commercial and I'd say, oh, that's Dick Summer. You know. Equally as good uh, in this episode is, is Don Giller's timing and opening comments as well. Again, picture perfect. <laughs> yes. Knows how to make an entrance. I, I got to get this beard back. Fast. <laughs> you had a beard? Uh, <laughs> hold on a second. Let me see something. Get a Merkin. Oh, man. You know, that mustache is perfect. It borderlines a porn stash. Like, you're not there, but you're close. The borderlines a up. porn I, stash? I dig it. A porn yeah. stash? You're almost, not quite. You're almost, though. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You could host Midnight Blue with that mustache right now. Yeah. Hold on a second. I think <laughs> I think I can. There we go. Is that better? No, you need more than that. There we go. Okay, I got it back. I can do this now. Oh, no kidding. Huh? See? That's good. See? I got it. What'd you do, Alex? I don't know. I got a thing where I, oh, here, make it a little darker. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Is that right? Okay. Well, this is one of those universal things that all ages like. My granddaughter would be taken so taken by doing that with filters right now. Every generation loves filters. You have them on your uh, on your Zoom. Yep. Well, not, yeah. I just choose not to use mine. Hmm? Yeah. These are must. Yeah. Well, why can't we? Why, why can't we do it in real life though? <laughs> we should have a filter episode where everybody wears a different one. Well, you want to grow a mustache, Paula? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. See? And you wouldn't even know if I'd had that uh, filter on. You know? I think I'll do that for the for until it grows back. There you go. I'm using a filter. I'm actually a 400 pound Samoan woman. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta go. Well, I'm. Uh, yeah. so, so does my overtime. The overtime's been good though. So, yeah. so does my dear <laughs> have to go. Okay. This was a good one. This is fun. Hey, thanks to uh, thanks to Charlie and thanks yeah. to uh, uh, Len Lafrisco and thank you uh, to uh, uh, our good friend Andrew Deutsch and of course uh, Mike Chisholm, Francine Witt. Wonderful having you here. Uh, Charlene Solis, uh, wonderful always. Paul Levin. Love seeing you here, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks here. 
Uh, the and Marjorie, what's for dinner? Mm -hmm. Ah, surprise. <laughs> uh, that means it's all leftovers. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, thank you. And of course, Don Giller, who I'm one of these days, I'm going to have lunch with him. We're going to, we're, we'll meet, we'll, we'll get together on the Van Ryan Express. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love to travel. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now it's time for Edward Berger to sign us off by saying, That's all, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, See you next week. Mm -hmm. Have a good week. Have a good week.